Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In our justice system, we give law enforcement officers incredible powers. The power to investigate, to search, to seize, to stop. The power to allege and accuse. The power to eavesdrop and intercept private communications. The power to look through bank records. The power to look through phone records. The power to even check what books you checked out of the library. These are awesome powers that must be used responsibly because those powers affect reputations and freedom. These awesome powers are given a correspondingly high expectation that these powers will be used fairly, lawfully, professionally, and in a manner worthy of our respect. About two weeks ago, FBI agent Peter Strzok was interviewed for more than 10 hours. We learned that agent Strzok has a most unusual and largely self-serving definition of bias. Agent Strzok, despite the plain language of his text and emails, despite the Inspector General's report, and despite common sense, doesn't think he was biased. He thinks calling someone destabilizing for the country isn't bias. He thinks promising to protect the country from someone he hasn't even begun to investigate isn't bias. He thinks promising to stop someone he is supposed to be fairly investigating from ever becoming president isn't bias. He thinks talking about an insurance policy to keep someone from becoming president isn't bias. But that's for one of the folks he was investigating. He has a different set of rules for others that he's investigating. Agent Strzok thinks saying someone he is allegedly investigating should be elected president 100 million to zero before he ever interviews her. He doesn't think that's bias. Agent Strzok thinks pronouncing someone innocent before bothering to interview more than 30 different witnesses isn't bias. He thinks claiming you can smell the Trump supporters isn't biased, but he doesn't say a single solitary word about being able to smell the support of any other candidate. To him, that isn't bias. The moment special counsel Bob Mueller found out about Peter Strzok's text and emails, he kicked him off of the investigation. But that was a year and a half too late the text and the emails may have been discovered in May of 2017, but the bias existed and was manifest a year and a half before that, all the way back to late 2015 and early 2016. So it wasn't the discovery of text that got him fired. It was the bias manifest in those texts that made him unfit to objectively and dispassionately investigate. So if the bias existed in late 2015 and early 2016, and it did, his own fitness to investigate existed then as well. Agent Strzok struggled to define bias for the better part of 10 hours. For the rest of us, bias is the prejudging of a person, a group, or a thing. It usually has a negative connotation, but it is a preconceived position or a prejudgment. It is the making up of your mind ahead of time based on anything other than the facts, and that is exactly what he did. Bias is saying Hillary Clinton should win the presidency 100 million to zero when she was still under investigation, wasn't even the nominee, hadn't been interviewed, and 30 other witnesses had also not been interviewed. In March of 2016, Agent Strzok had Clinton winning 100 million to zero, even though the investigation was far from being over. That is the prejudging of someone's innocence before all the evidence is in. On the other hand, he said Trump would be destabilizing, called him an idiot, abysmal, bigoted nonsense, called him a disaster, said he should F himself. Strzok promised to stop Trump from becoming president before the investigation even began. He talked longingly of Trump resigning two months after he was inaugurated and well before the special counsel investigation even began. Strzok even talked about impeachment the day special counsel was appointed. That is prejudging guilt, it is prejudging punishment, and it is textbook bias. 
We live in a 50-50 country, and we accept that. But we're a 100% country when it comes to having law enforcement that doesn't prejudge innocence before investigations are over and doesn't prejudge guilt and punishment before an investigation even begins. Agent Strzok had Hillary Clinton winning the White House before he finished investigating her. Agent Strzok had Donald Trump impeached before he even started investigating him. That is bias. Agent Strzok may not see it, but the rest of the country does, and it's not what we want, expect, or deserve from any law enforcement officer, much less the FBI. A fair, bias-free investigation is not a Republican or Democrat issue. It's an American issue, or at least it used to be. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Agent Strzok, the FBI investigation into potential Russia collusion with the Trump campaign began on July 31st, 2016. You uh, drafted the originating document. You approved the originating document. You were the point of contact on the originating document. And the FBI has represented to Congress that nothing from an investigative standpoint with respect to Russian collusion and the Trump campaign began before July 31st, 2016. But 10 days before the investigation even began, 10 days before you drafted the originating document, approved the originating document, with the point of contact on the originating document, 10 days before the investigation began, which the department you work for says nothing was done before July 31st. You said Trump is a disaster. I have no idea how destabilizing his presidency would be. And because you struggled a couple of weeks ago with a word that I thought had a commonly accepted definition, I'm going to go ahead and give you the definition of destabilizing. The first one kind of is obvious. It's to make unstable. The second one caught my attention, the second dictionary definition. To call something such as a government to be incapable of functioning or surviving. That's a pretty significant allegation to make 10 days before you even began to investigate someone. So that was before, before July 31st. I want to ask you in that first week, we'll go ahead and up it to eight days, between July 31st and August 8th, how many interviews did you conduct related to the alleged collusion between Russia and the Trump campaign? So, Congressman, as you know, counsel for the FBI, based on the special counsel's equities, has instructed me not to answer questions about the ongoing investigation. I'm asking for a number. Russian attempts to Agent, interfere. Agent Strzok, I'm asking for a number. I haven't gotten to the names. How many people had you investigated, had you interviewed between the beginning of it on July 31st and August the 8th? It's an eight-day time period. We're a week into an investigation. How many people had you interviewed? Congressman, I understand your question. I appreciate it, and I would very much like to answer. But as I've stated, as you know that counsel of the FBI, based on the special counsel's equities, have directed me not to answer any <coughs> questions about the ongoing investigation into Russian attempts to interfere. So, so you you the, gentleman, the gentleman will suspend, and the clock will suspend. Mr. Strzok, you are under subpoena and are required to answer the question. Are you objecting to the question? If so, please state your objection. Mr. Chairman, I object. The, the gentleman it does not have standing Mr. to Chair object. I, there is no point, point of order. No point of order well, here. The, the, the point of order it should be heard. What's the, what's the gentleman will state his point of order. My point of order is that intentionally or otherwise, this demand puts Mr. Strzok in an impossible position. He is still an employee of the FBI, and FBI counsel has the, instructed him not to answer the question. The gentleman, we have a problem with this policy. We should take it up with the FBI, not Badger, Mr. Strzok. The but gentleman's should... point of order is not well taken. It's right the, on point. No, it's not. The Mr. Strzok, are you objecting to the question? And if so, please state your objection. Mr. Chairman, two things. One, I do not believe I am here under subpoena. I believe I am here voluntarily. Second. 
I will not, based on direction of the FBI to me, based on that, I will not answer that question. Because it goes to matters which are related to the ongoing investigations being undertaken by the special Mr. counsel's Strzok, office. Mr. Strzok, you have not stated a l valid legal basis for not responding to a question directed to you by a member of the United States House of Representatives, and you are overruled. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Your, uh, let, me, let me continue. Your testimony is essential to this hearing and to our oversight and information gathering functions with regard to the actions taken mm. and decisions made by the Department of Justice and the Federal Bureau of Investigation in 2016 and 2017, I am specifically directing you to answer the question in response to our subpoena, notwithstanding your objection. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Strzok, please be advised that you can either comply with the committee's directive to answer the question or refuse to do so the latter of which will place you at risk of a contempt citation and potential criminal liability. Point of do, do order. Do you understand that? Point of order, Mr. The, Chairman. The question is directed to the witness. And I have a point of order before he answers the question. The, the, the point of order is not well taken until... You don't know what the point of order is. You can't say it's not well the, taken. The point of order, the, the, the witness will answer the question. Challenge. 